Hey, this is Erlen Jelbeck and you're listening to the Thomas Eriksson Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Thomas Eriksson Podcast. Episode 22, if I'm not mistaken. No, 22 it is. Oh man, uh, what a weekend. I just came back home after visiting uh, my good friend uh, Silenos uh, at his biker club's clubhouse. We had a really little and cozy party there. Uh, COVID restrictions and everything. No worries. And uh, Silenos is actually my uh, very first uh, returning guest. He came on here. Uh, he was one of the first guests, I think. Maybe the second. So um, uh, back then, he uh, we went through all of the Dimme Borgir uh, history, uh, which is really fascinating and cool stories. Uh, make sure to go back and check out that episode. Uh, and the reason why he is a returning guest is, uh, yeah, obviously he's a good friend of mine, but he also has a side project uh, with his death metal band, Insidious Disease. So uh, this time around, we are focusing mainly on that. But uh, as friends sit down with a few bears and talk, uh, the conversation just runs all, all over the place. So uh, I think there's some interesting stuff going on during our talk check that out really soon uh, the episode was recorded uh, yesterday which was saturday the 5th of december and today is the 6th when i'm finishing up and uh, doing the editing here uh, and today was a big day in morkland uh, by the way, for you who are uh, stopping by here randomly or for the first time, uh, Mork is uh, my main priority, which is my black metal band. Been releasing albums uh, since 2013 and um, are coming up on uh, album number five, which will be out uh, next year. And uh, all the albums are out uh, via the mighty and legendary uh, label Peaceville Records, so make sure to check that out as well as check out uh, my catalog. Mork is also a live band uh, with uh, full members and everything, so uh, we have been playing around the world. Not this year though, uh, obviously, but we are uh, constantly rearranging so we can go back out as soon as COVID uh, ends. And uh, back to the point, today, the world's uh, largest and greatest metal festival, Wacken Open Air in uh, Germany, just announced Mork for next year's uh, poster and event, which is amazing. You know, which, which metal band out there is not striving to appear at the mighty Wacken? So thank you, Wacken, for uh, including us for the second time, actually, because we were on the uh, poster for this year. But as soon as COVID came around, uh, Wacken just dropped everything and started rebooking. So we, appreciate, we are really appreciative that we are back on. So thank you so much. Hopefully see all of you down there. Uh, next July. Uh, <clears throat> as I have you on the thread, as we say in uh, Norway, uh, I have your ears and attention. Uh, just a week or two ago, we dropped the new uh, EP, Pesta. Did you check it out? No? Well, it's on Spotify and Apple Music and whatever you are streaming on. And uh, we also did a limited uh, vinyl. So please uh, drop by the official Mork web shop to pick up uh, one of those. Or at uh, the Peace Will Burning Shed store. 
If you go to the Mork store, though, uh, at the web uh, webpage, uh, you will get a uh, um, numbered edition, and uh, it may contain a signature uh, if you want one. So thank you very much. And uh, while there, pick up a t-shirt or two or ten. All right. Thanks. Uh, in a few days, there will be even more exciting news. By the way, I can't uh, spill the beans on that this time around, but uh, stay tuned around the 10th of December. Then something will be announced. Exciting stuff! All right, let's jump into my talk with uh, Silenos, my second talk with Silenos, this time about Insidious Disease, the death metal band. Uh, they recently released their new album, which is called After Death. Uh, and they are currently signed to Nuclear Blast, which is amazing. And uh, the album is great. I'm not big into death metal, but I really like this one. So please enjoy my uh, talk. Have a beer, sit back and uh, relax and uh, join us. Friendship is like pissing your pants. Everyone can see it, but only you know its warmth. Exactly. <laughs> is that how we start this? Is uh, that you and me? <laughs> yeah. We are, we, are, we are like pissing our pants. Well, it works for like 10 minutes in the, in the winter time. Yeah, then it becomes really stiff yeah. and cold. Perhaps. Then it becomes real. Ah, all right. All uh, right. I'm... Uh, I'm currently on the road. Uh, I was invited to your uh, your biker hangout, right? Clubhouse, is, is yes. It's a clubhouse. Yes. Charity bikers. Yes. And uh, this is my first returning guest. This is my uh, old friend, Silenos. Svenatle Kopperud. Yes. Hello. Hello. How Good are Good to have you? you here. Thank you. It's my second time during COVID. Is it? Yep. All right. Uh, when was the last time? Uh, a month or two months ago? Two months, maybe? three, Two months? I think so. Yeah. So I've been here. Yeah. So uh, now I have parked the car and I have thrown away the key. Yes. And you gave me a beer. Yeah. Hopefully it tastes uh, good. It tastes like its name, ass. <laughs> <laughs> You Borg, you. <laughs> I actually brought Borg. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw that. <laughs> uh, this will be a, a bit of a party cast then, I suppose. We are drinking beers and having fun. Yeah, try to loosen up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this was a bit spontaneous. But uh, the, the, the reason why it fitted well for me to have you back now on the podcast is that uh, the last time we focused on Dimmy Borgir, yeah, and we never touched upon your other project, which is your death metal band, Insidious Disease. Yeah, pretty I, much. I don't think we touched it at all, actually. No. So uh, it's perfect for this one, then. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's uh, when you have a new record coming out after ten years. It's, yep. uh Yeah, you should try to <laughs> promote it. <laughs> yeah, so, somewhat. <laughs> I, the, the reason why it's 10 years ago, because this is not the ma main priority, of course. No, obviously. Uh, I think most people know that. Um, that being said, it's um, if we're going to talk about the new album, and it's 10 years since the first debut album, uh, mm. it hasn't taken us 10 years to make this album, obviously, no. but it's been... Yeah, you on know, and off, you know. Well, I got. Uh, I think it has to be at least four years ago that you sent me a demo. I maybe it's even longer because we we started demoing songs for this album in 2011, 2012. Oh yeah, okay. And it was uh, finished, mastered, mixed everything in 2017. We recorded wow. the drums in 2015. Wow. So it's been in the in the works for quite some time. So it's been in the oven. So it's overly cooked now yes. and ready to very be pregnant. Yeah. Very pregnant. Yeah. 
<laughs> burst ready. <laughs> I, I remember the demo. I, I, I listened through the album on the way here. Mm -hmm. Killer stuff, as always. Thank you. Thank you. You are a riff uh, maestro, as you know. I'm not so sure about that, but uh, I'll take it coming from you. Yeah, you should. But I didn't, I, I tried to remember the demo you sent me. I haven't heard that for about five years or something. But was that it, with vocals or was it with, without vocals? Because I, I, I probably sent you like several song snippets here and there. Yeah, it, it was a complete song, I think. I, I'm not sure about vocals, but mm -hmm. I remember the riff in my head vaguely because it was catchy. Okay. But I did. I don't think I heard it on the album. Are there some songs you left there off were, there? Um, most likely five to six song structures at least that, that didn't, didn't make it. No. Plus, okay. plus we were um, kind of conscious about not. You know, this is this is the type of music that you don't want to have like eighty minutes of. You you want forty to forty three, forty five minutes max top in my. In my head, at least. Yeah. Um, because you want the listener to maybe listen to it again, mm. you know? Um, you don't want the people to get fed up during one no, set? No, I mean, it, it's it, obviously it's not rocket science. Uh, the songs we do is like pretty much straightforward, but we want to, you know, keep the listener interested in... Pushing, course, pushing it, the button again. It's so. the same thing as playing a too long a concert, you know? You, yeah. don't, you don't want them to leave fed up, you know? You yeah, want or, to leave or, them hungry, you exactly. know? Exactly, or too long of a tour, because you don't mm. want to be on tour for months at a time, because, you know, you, it becomes a shore, and it's... yeah. Autopilot is a uh, uh, dangerous uh, uh, exactly, plateau. Yeah. Uh, you know what about uh, leaving six uh, tracks off the, the album? Uh, well, uh, it, it probably is more than that, but it, at least there was like several proper songs that we didn't put on. Yeah, on the I, album. Uh, by t by the time this podcast is released, I think the an announcement has been made. If not, uh, we will be announcing the new album pretty soon. And uh, uh, via Peaceville as before. Yep. And as uh, before, I uh, was told by the label that we need to take out a couple songs. I always deliver too much. Mm -hmm. So there's songs in the archives, you know, because they want just what you said now. You don't want it to be too long, you know, both for the fans and for critics and everything. Leave them hungry, you know. So what's the sweet spot? Is it around 40 minutes? For me personally, when I listen to... <clears throat> this type of music like extreme metal um i would say yeah 40 to 45 minutes top uh if it's if it's more of an ambient uh metal type of thing like mm. uh, then it doesn't matter because then you just go on and on yeah it's like <laughs> a it's like a journey you know yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. but uh, when i when i'm focused listening to uh, an extreme metal album it's it's around 40 minutes, I would say. I think I del deliver around an, an hour each time. Right. Because from from the last album to this one, I, ca I just forget about that thing. You yeah, know? because you're in your spot, yep. you know, it, and uh, and you, you make songs that is supposed to be, it's representing you. Yeah. And, and you forget about time. Of if course. It's like, 30 minutes or one hour or 70 minutes doesn't matter because you you're in the zone and you make the songs yeah and you make it on based on what you think should be on an album of course you, but you, that's that's where the producing part comes in especially when with you as well you're your own producer so uh, sometimes sadly yes <laughs> yeah exactly that, <laughs> that that's the point where where it's it's a it's tricky and hard and uh and it crushes your ego sometimes to sit back and you have to shave off the the fat you know oh, man, even dude. even by your standards oh. or the label or you know but you're the producer i'm the producer and you know that's that's the tricky part it really hurts to take out it's like cutting away your children you know it could be uh, mm. considered uh, like that yeah well yeah. uh, you know Luckily, we, we, we decided quite quickly which two tracks to take out. So 
you know. Yes, if, if, sometimes if, that's yeah. that's easy. Sometimes it's very difficult because yeah. you're like, ah, oh, maybe this fits better in this track list. Yeah. If, if if you do like tracks, that's also really tricky, you know, to to find the the, the playlist or which one should be in order. Blah mm. blah blah blah. Yep. Uh, and I hate that. It, yeah. That's it's difficult. Very tricky. Yeah. Unless you're making a you know a conscious concept album, you know. Sure, but mm. then then that's a whole different thing again. Then yep. uh, it's like there's so many so-called concept albums, and uh, personally, when I listen to let's say uh, Operation Mindcrime, it doesn't feel like a uh, like a concept album because it it just flows, you know. A funny one is actually Kiss when they uh, was about to release The Elder. Right. Yeah, which actually is a concept album. Which includes one of my favorite Kiss songs, The Oath. That's an excellent one. Yes. That's the opener, I think. Uh, the, yeah. I think is it, it is. Yeah. But the, the point here is that they delivered this concept album to the label, and the label basically took all the songs and threw them <laughs> up in the air and just rearranged them all and right. released it. So it's like total opposite. Yeah, that, that's, that's when Gene and Paul were, weren't the producers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, a concept album just rearranged. It's, it's like taking a book and just ripping out the chapters and just randomly putting them in there. You know? Yeah, and then they get paid to do that as well. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> but my good friend, let's go back. Let's. Um, I want to. We need to make this a story, a story pod uh, like the last one, but this time around around your death metal life and how you got right. into the that thing and started the band and take us back well uh, that's where i really come from you know it's like um the death metal thing was um was something i really got into in the late 80s as a early teen and uh, i didn't play any instrument until 90 91 summer of 91 i think mm. um and uh yeah that's that's where it all began you know i got uh, asked to uh hey you have to come here uh, we need a bass player but i don't i don't have an instrument i don't have a bass i don't know what to play well we'll we'll show you it's is these and these songs and it, it's D A and G and well, you know yeah 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 sure yeah <laughs> so that that's how it uh, basically started for me playing in real instrument you know uh, I wouldn't say my family is particularly musical my my grandfather played the tuba my um, my mother's mother uh, played guitar yeah. um, my mom actually plays a little bit of keyboard and guitar. But apart from that, I'm not from a very musical family. So that's quite a lot, actually. <laughs> well, I guess it is. <laughs> hold that, but hold that thought. Hey, mom, I'm frame. That's a little bit of a Norwegian English joke there. I had to stop the recording a little bit just to make. Uh, I, I always promise to send a text to my mom and my girlfriend that I have arrived well and is safe. But I tend to forget and well, it's easy we're men we, we are forget. men we are quite simple yeah <laughs> i don't want to cause any worry you know so sorry continue <laughs> where were we, we um, um, yeah you, you came uh, from a non-musical family with a lot of musicians <laughs> <laughs> i guess you could say yeah um yeah so what happened was that uh i had to jump in learning the bass uh or playing the bass which uh, band was this was this, a this death was we didn't even have a band name at the time I think. it was a death metal band no it was it was just a constellation of of guys that uh were supposed to play at like uh like an end of school type of uh arrangement stuff you know like oh cover need, songs yeah and cover stuff. songs mm. basically yeah. so uh yeah, this was the summer of 91, because I remember uh, Metallica's Black Album had just came out, and I had to learn um, Enter Sandman, I had to learn um, uh, John B. Good, um, and 
yeah, a couple of other songs. Mm. And, you know, it, yeah, it was kind of tricky, you know, not, not really playing an instrument, although I, I felt like uh, um, that I know how to have the rhythm and I know time, keeping time, yeah, stuff like that. That was natural for you. That was natural. Uh, that's, but, a, that's, a, that's a must, you know. It is, it mm. is. But um, apart from that, it was just, you know, got thrown into into it. And uh, yeah, this this string makes an A sound, this makes a D sound, mm -hmm. and blah, 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 you know. But you can also find the A on this string. Exactly, and that's know? how I, I pretty much taught myself you know i had friends showing me how to do bar chords and and stuff like that which came a bit later with guitars and stuff but uh, i think yeah. I, I think we talked about this last time too that you know probably did yeah that uh, i mean you showed me a demo riff yeah which i love from a uh, track you which know? one was it uh, blessings all oh, right right uh, but yeah but you play differently yes yeah <laughs> i played the long long yeah, yeah you actually played it the bass way <laughs> yes. because you used only the two heaviest strings top three strings yeah. yes yeah and i kind of include the g string and yeah. stuff like not that g string but you know yep. yeah, yeah 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 no but that's uh i think that maybe old habit old habit mm. and uh it's uh and I think, like we talked about last time as well, uh, bass is such a underrated instrument. Oh yes, and uh, it's not like you know, um, it, it's from foundation of. Uh, it's like the motor; it needs oil, but you need rubber for the tires, and yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. the bass comes in for me. If a young musician is kind of pushed into playing bass because. Guitar is taken, drum is taken, vocalist is taken. If that guy or girl actually can sit down and realize how important the bass is, they can make worlds of difference, you know, Absolutely. in the music. Yeah, I love playing bass and me too, and making bass lines for my songs. Yes, that's. I think that's basically become my strongest point um, or feature. You know, I think uh, we realized uh, how um, the basic way of of putting songs together in a way you know mm -hmm. it's like uh bass with drums it's always been like a um uh, like the basic foundation you know yeah. it's like uh, i know that we don't do it but i know a lot of bands uh, record drums first and then bass before guitars that's a strange one for me that's very strange as well i could never do that i could never do that <laughs> but i understand <laughs> maybe why they do it yeah uh if they're really well rehearsed you know a big band know exactly what they're supposed to play at every little thing yeah but the thing is uh, the guitar riffs can tell their story you know and they have their sound of course but the bass can actually it, it becomes kind of the binaural effect because yes. you can put like a little bit of a minor on top or another yeah. chord on top and it changes the entire mood. Exactly. And uh, yeah, binaural, you, that's you, a good you word. You know, when, when uh, yeah, exactly. When, when you record uh, ideas for your uh, band, mm. you play guitars after the drums. But of when, course. when you do the bass, mm. then you're like, oh. Yes. That's oh, the what time if I change what, what if I change this on guitar then? Yep. You know, then it might change the whole idea. If the guitar riffs go go in, say A, you know, you can have the bass right. in like C or yeah. E or, and it changes yeah. everything. Yeah, I love it. And that that's that's the um, perfect part of of songwriting. You think you have it all figured out mm -hmm. with a guitar riff, yes. and then you add the bass, and it's like, hmm, what about this? And then you change the guitar riff, and it's like, ah. Oh. You when, know, and then when young musicians uh, realize this, I think they have kind of cracked the code. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because I think it could be of, very helpful for songwriting. Of course, but I think people just tend to follow the guitar uh, ground note, you know, mm -hmm. root note. Yeah, just out of oh, that's supposed to be like that, you know. Yeah, and then it becomes a habit. But if you understand that you can play around, you crack the code. Yeah, in my head. Yeah, in my head as well. Yeah, and it's uh, it's very important to to not leave anything 
uh, not tried out. If yeah. You know what I mean? No like, holes unfilled, right? <laughs> no holes barred. <laughs> <laughs> ah, skål. Skål. Important to have a sip. What do you usually say? Ass to mouth. Yes. We are, talk, we are talking about ass beer, not yeah. uh, actual asses. But it's written as. It is like us. Abras. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. How did you find death metal? Uh, I found death metal. Uh, I think it was through uh, some. Uh, what do you call it? This, these old magazines in the eighties, where you can actually uh, order, uh, you know, albums. Mm-hmm. And I remember in '88, I re- uh, I ordered the New Order from Testament and uh, Leprosy from Death. Yeah. And before that, I hadn't really listened to any brutal music apart from Bathory. You know, uh, that was probably the most brutal stuff at the time, as far as I remember. But yeah. are you comparing Bathory to Metallica now and just saying that Bathory is more? Yeah, I could because um, you didn't I'm, find Bathory first, right? No, no. no. Metallica came first. Metallica came yeah. way before that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but I remember when I when I heard. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember when I heard Bathory the first time, but yeah. I remember when I heard it and I knew it was Bathory. Yeah. That was um, Blood for Death album, and I remember I was like really fascinated about the guitar sound because it reminded me so much about the guitar sound on uh, Master of Puppets. Oh, really? In my head, yeah. yeah. Is, that the, is that the third? Uh, no, is it fourth? Fourth. Uh, uh, isn't it? Fourth. Is the, is fourth the, album, yeah. It's the Goat, and then it's the Return, then the Black Mark. And then and, uh, Death. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So th- that was my uh, my big revelation in, in the Bathory uh, world, yeah. you know. Uh, and so I think that was like um, like a portal to to the extreme stuff. And through um, the Rockbox uh, uh, radio program uh, in the eighties on Swedish, is that the Swedish one? Yeah, yes. Swedish one. Yeah. Yep. I always taped them. So uh, uh, with you know the reception was really bad where I lived at the time. You know, it's like, but I still have the tapes, yeah. and I I can just look back at how much that formed my musical taste, you know. Mm. I, I would say that I have a really uh, open-minded view on music, mm. uh, obviously even more now than back then, but um, uh, radio shows like that was really helping forming my my musical tastes. Mm. And... Uh, so uh, Bathory was definitely a portal for me. Uh, and then, obviously, when I ordered those tapes, I didn't order vinyl, but the tape of the New Order and... Uh, leprosy. Leprosy. Yeah. It was, uh, and then, the fir- obviously, I had a, I'd heard about Testament, I heard about Death, but I hadn't really put much too, uh, too much, you know, uh, essence to it. So... Uh, but, but you I, clearly you drew a separation between the two, right? Obvi- oh yeah, 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 for sure. And um, when I listened to the Leprosy album, I was like, "Oh shit, this is it sounds so extreme," you know. Mm. And uh, but that you know, it was it was a start, a tiny start. But that's like a milestone in the genre, right? I would say so. Yeah, uh, listening back to the album now and uh, and. Uh, and they're the death catalog. Uh, I know that that has been uh, such a huge uh, inspiration. You know, I'm, uh, is that their f- third? Uh, that's their second album. Second, Scream, Bloody Gore, Gore is the first one. And that, I heard that after Leprosy. Mm-hmm. So for me now, it's it's always been Scream, Bloody Gore as my favorite. Okay, death metal. Album. Yeah, uh, favorite death metal album. Overall, that's Overall, the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. But um, yeah, it, it was weird to uh, to go back to that album after hearing Leprosy. You know, it's because that Leprosy sounds like really. Is it a bit professional? More, yeah, it's it more sounds po- yeah. very you know a bit really, more polished. Yeah, but is the both albums uh, more sound? Um, that's a good question. 
I don't know. Um, I think the first one is uh, it's a Morris album. Yeah. I'm not sh- sure about the second one. I is guess it? suppose it is. What was the, oh. the guy's name? Scott Burns, the producer there. Yeah. I suppose he did that. It's one yeah. of the biggest I guess albums. You have to look at the internet. Sorry, guys. In- interwebs. Uh, look it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you ever meet Chuck? Uh, no, I, I didn't meet him, but we played uh, together at Dynamo '98. Yeah. Uh, same which, stage. Same stage. Yeah. Main stage. Mm. Um, and it was amazing to see death from front of the stage and on on the stage as well. Yeah. Uh, or from the side of the you stage. You just went around and well, just. Well, yeah. <laughs> but back then, you know, I was uh, I was too young, I guess you can say, to to stay on stage watching the band because it's you know you want to watch it from oh you from, from the, the front. pit from the pit yeah yeah oh yeah so you were a headbanger uh i wasn't a headbanging that particular show but yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but it was uh, it was amazing show so you never say hello or anything no, you just I didn't. saw I'm, him went on and went yes, off yes but you, did you keep for this? me he, he was a rock star you, have uh, to you didn't that. dare to no approach? no okay. you have to remember back in 98 uh it's like meeting or seeing some of your peers in in the catering tent is like oh oh no no, no I, I better not so you just kept a distance yeah yeah because it was possible to yeah yeah of him. course yeah 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 absolutely what do you think about that today when he's gone well i, I still have that feeling on some of my peers <laughs> yeah <laughs> I but i mean the point that you never actually oh said. well you know it's it is what it is it's uh that's true. I'm, I'm just uh happy to be able to to see death playing a show yeah. you know was that the one and only time yeah and uh, no the the first time was in uh in norway in 91 uh, at uh, betong yes or yeah betong yeah right that was an amazing show yeah absolutely for me back then and now obviously still flawless uh, we, uh did a headline yeah uh, which with uh, what's, human what the human album what support band uh was it low blast uh i think from france yeah yeah uh first time in europe for them uh death yeah i think uh, i think the first time in norway yeah yeah for sure yeah cool that was uh yeah that was amazing that was amazing time altogether because in in norway in 91 92 there was like that's the formative years you know yeah of what we know yeah the black uh, circle and whatnot yeah that's when things started to merge even yeah, yeah. so uh a re- really inspirational time did you go to the morbid angel show too yeah was that before the that death was one? the first one yeah uh yeah. the first big uh death metal show in norway uh, it, okay morbid when, angel entombed and unleashed when was that November 30th, uh, 91, I think. And that was before death? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Death was in 92. Uh, this in is fe- like... February, the... March... Uh, yeah, okay. I can't, can't okay. remember. So February, March, 92. Because yeah. that Morbid Angel show is something that is mentioned in books and mm-hmm. in interviews. And it seems like, like the first seed was uh, you know planted in a way yeah yeah absolutely people went there got inspired and oh we need to do this i remember i i was wearing an uh, obituary t-shirt at the morbid angel show and when i was in the in the bathroom someone with a different dialect than me uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh took offense and he was like uh what the fuck are you uh wearing that shirt for that's a bullshit band oh, you should get out of here you're too young and blah, blah. well i was too young probably but it's not a bullshit band so i was no. like hmm, tell me that again <laughs> you know that's i was like 14 one. 15 years old you know it's like but um nothing. obituary that's that's more a sound too right yes yeah it's morbid angel too uh yeah all of them well, to a certain extent, I guess. Yeah. You know, even Cadwell Corpse went down there. They went down there, yeah, because yes. they're not from Florida. No. Nope. A, a lot they're... of people think that you know the bands in Florida are from Florida, but they're from Buffalo. Yes. And uh, it, I need to be honest from the get-go here. Yes. Death metal has never been my big thing. So but Cannibal I, Corpse is a thing. That's a big you. thing for yeah. me. So I'm, I'm. When people ask me about death metal, I was like, Cannibal Corpse, yeah, you know. I heard them 
on Ace Ventura. The first one, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And uh, I love that band to this day. Yeah, me too, me too. We have been fortunate to tour with them uh, a few times. and With Dimmu? Yeah. Okay. Dimmu, yeah. Sharing the bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know this. No, no. Cool. That, you know, back in the day, like early 2000s. Yeah, when I th- you actually took me to a Cannibal Corp show. Yeah, that's that's, that's right. A uh, couple, yeah, three years ago or something. Yeah. And we went backstage and met the guys. Yeah. Great people. Great people. Always uh, been good people. Uh, I don't know, I remember, um, you know, Rob Barrett, the guitar player. Yes. He was really accommodating. He was like, uh, hey, uh, are you comfortable? Would you, would, would you like some food? Would you like some beer? He, yeah. was, he was like this, you know, yeah. I was like, oh, wow. And I remember Pat was uh, standing there and showing you and me like uh, pictures his of new flamethrower. Yeah, on his yeah, yeah. phone and stuff. Yeah. And we talked to George, and he was like, "All, oh, oh man, I saw the guy from Merciful Fate the other day. Ugh, total <laughs> fan, you know? Yeah, uh, excellent. No, people. but that's 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 how they are, and uh, most people are like that. You know, I'm I'm just happy to to have friends in so many bands. Yeah that are down to earth and just being themselves you know no fucking stuck up or there's so like that. there's so many retard retarded people out there who see caliber corpse artworks and read lyrics and stuff and think that the band is like maniacs yeah of course but they're really not it bothers me no but i mean we don't keep we don't hold the news uh, the news channel uh, because what they say so yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> it just falls flat really. <laughs> it does <laughs> let's go back to you and death metal and uh, you saw the yeah that that was that was a really inspirational time obviously and uh, yeah. that's when uh, after playing the bass a little bit more uh, I got hold of a really cheap cheap guitar and a little combo amplifier mm. and um, and yeah trying to figure out my own ideas you know uh, so uh, at the time I was still playing bass when I had my uh, my band before Dimu yeah uh, we did mostly covers but we had three four our, our own songs mm-hmm. and uh we did some local shows and we did really local show like one probably two miles from my house uh, with a band called testimony we were yeah. supporting them and as you know uh testimony was the band that blasphemer uh, you know blasphemer had yeah, yeah. Um, before ma'am so uh that was really really good time i mean i was 14 15 at the time was that did they play thrash or death or what was that more like death i would say you know uh death thrashy stuff um and they i remember when i saw them first at yes i actually mm-hmm. when they played live there with the red harvest and igneous uh uh i hadn't heard the band before and i think they played four or five songs maximum yeah because they didn't have any more songs to play, I think. Are you guys the same age? Uh, no, I think Rune is a bit older than me, yeah. Okay. But um, another good friend of mine, Justin, who played uh, drums for Testimony and Fury. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, they they did a really great show and uh, was one of the uh, the opening bands that night. Mm. Yes, I'm. And I was like totally floored. I still listen to the the live tape that Justin recorded with his own boombox next oh, yeah? to the the drums. So awesome! Uh, it's awesome. Did uh, Rune sing? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Sing and play guitar. Yes. Rune, if you're listening, you need to start singing again. I would like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I mean, they they played uh, uh, my favorite death song actually. Um, and they played the Pestilence song, I think. And I think it was two or three uh, songs they had made their own. So Rune is great. He's, um, he's probably the, the tightest right-hand riffer that 
I can come up with. <laughs> yeah, and, and his extreme riffs are, I don't yeah, know, they're yeah. uh, one and only, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's, I think he might be the first inspiration for me to get into doing black metal riffs. Very, but, very underrated. But I think that's also because uh, he doesn't get the credit that he deserves, you know. Uh, for, uh, ever, he, ever since, ever since the beginning, you know. Oh. He was like the, I guess, suppose he was the young guy who kind of stepped in and went into mayhem yeah, I mean, after if, the tragedy. If, if you're going to riff after Euronymous the way he was riffing with his right hand, you, yeah. you kind of have to. <laughs> but it's so cool because Rune, he's a completely different guy and a completely different approach to riff making. So mayhem, I think. To, I'm not going to speak bad about uh, Euronymous, but my mayhem is like is the blasphemer mayhem mm -hmm. to me. For, because for I'm me, I'm lucky because I like I love both. Yeah, you of know. course I love both. Yeah. But the first things I heard was the Chimera stuff and Grand Declaration of War stuff. Right, right. You know, so that's what got me into this. Yeah. And a little uh, little bit of a tease now. I'm not going to speak too much because Rune will have my head off. But he actually texted me the other day and uh, he has some uh, plans in the making. Well, listen to his uh, new constellation, Ultimus. Yeah, yeah. Just, just take that for... You know, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's so that's a great uh, album. Yeah, something it's wicked. Awesome. War, uh, something wicked marches in, yes. right? Yeah. Ah, oh, fucking awesome! But he has a new thing even after this, right? This, which he told me about. Oh, that sounds interesting. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's it's like I think we both um, take a lot of inspiration from. Uh, from our colleagues and friends mm. and and uses that as a uh, as a stepping stone to our own creativity of course you know? of and, course uh, you need to rub off from other uh, people yeah i think you know? so yeah. yeah it's just natural yeah you know? so how did you you know you started demo and stuff and played black metal obviously but when did you kind of well not obviously for other people but uh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but, but my point is how did you decide to do death metal as well well when before dimu uh with with the death metal band i had uh we call we call ourselves different names but we we stuck with malefic you know um so um i think you know uh in 2003 2004 i felt the need to like do more down tuned brutal stuff mm -hmm. i guess yeah. and uh and that's how insidious kind of uh started you know um the band i had before dimu uh, malefic which was with uh jun uh who was also almost child right almost child uh founder yeah i with, actually with met Galder. him once yeah uh, you're lucky because he he hates people and he yeah, lives, he lives he, in the woods. This <laughs> was really really random. I uh, it is my old friend, uh, you know, um, uh, Svein Svein Ivar. Yes, yes. Yeah. I remember getting to know him, and I was spending some time in Oslo. This is many many years ago. He was living in Grönland, right? And I remember sleeping over at his house. He was living together with uh, you know Han, Hans Fischte, uh, the vocalist. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. From Sortjern. Yep. And I remember there was this bald guy uh, sharing the couch with me, the other couch. It was two <laughs> couches. <laughs> uh, and I remember the next morning we got up and we got sober. And uh, <clears throat> turns out that's that guy. Oh, you got sober. Uh, I think so. But he didn't. Uh, I don't know. He was talking about, ah, fuck this. I'm in the city. I'm going back into the woods. You know, that was Jon, actually. Yeah. With the one and only time I met that guy. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's also one of the. Uh, and more underrated guitar players I, I know about. Yeah. He, he's also a, one of the tightest right hand riffers that I know about. And I know quite a few guitar players. Is he still an old man's child? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, because that's mainly Tom's thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think Tom is working on new stuff. So for those uh, <laughs> old man child fans listening yeah. now, they I think there's going to be, you know, something coming out 
uh, at some point. You know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. That's a f- We're looking forward to it. That's a long way uh, since the last one, right? Oh yeah, it's got to be. When was the last one? 2006, 2007 wow. or something like that. Well, that's I, like almost 15 years. Yeah. Cool. There. Yeah, there. I'm looking forward to. It. I've heard. Uh, I heard a few snippets, and uh, you know, Tom Galder, he's uh, he's excellent. He's an amazing too. riff maker. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah. So we obviously having him in in Dimu is. is that's a gift, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. Can you have him uh, make contact so we can do a podcast? I'm sure we can. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yep. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, why? You said 2003, four. you decided you need to play downtune stuff. Was yeah. That, was that it? Yeah. But um, why then? I don't know. Uh, it just felt the right time, and that's when I... Uh, ask John again, uh, Yarda, you yep. know, to uh, let let's put this shit together like we had in the past. Um, All of the two of you. Well, it was the first in the beginning, guy? yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and then uh, and then obviously uh, when Dimmu was touring the Ozfest, uh, we had Tony Lariano with us on drums. Yeah, and that's we, true. We talked about doing something together, so obviously it just made sense that. Ah, you know he would the, he the, would join on drums you know uh, so that that was the foundation basically and um, in my head now the pieces kind of fall together right because i remember you told me that after uh, the death coat run and os fests uh did had a little bit of a uh, downtime after the os fest run and then you decided to to put put things death into metal. motion yeah yes yeah. To put death into motion. Death. Um, yeah. So that that's uh, when I got my first proper home studio up and running. Okay. And managed to um, to record some ideas. I think we had like I say we because uh, everyone was in on it, obviously. Mm. And um, so there were three of you at that point. Yeah. Uh, in 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 very beginning because we didn't have a vocalist and I I demoed the songs with my vocal and oh I need to, to hear that <laughs> <laughs> listening back to it it's like really like typical down tune growl you know Ooh. yeah yeah so and I didn't really want that because not that I don't like it obviously but it's uh, you don't I, like I, the Cookie Monster come oh, on man of course I do but uh, that's you know I I want to to have an old school uh, top of the cake, if you know what I mean. I know and, what I mean. Uh, a bit so, more squealy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and that's how I got in touch with Mark, you know, uh, who used to sing with Morgoth. Yes. Uh, which was... Is that an 80s band, by the way? Yeah. This started okay. in 87, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was... Um, I had some. I had, I had some other guys uh, on on the on the paper that we wanted to try out, but as a vocalist, yeah, yeah. But uh, can Mark, you spill the beans on those? No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Mark definitely was was the one that that fit the the agenda. What was that kind of random? Because you knew the guy. No, or? we, we um, our old manager who's uh, deceased now. Um, was that Carson Ottebuck? Uh, he used to play guitar in Morgoth uh-huh. back in the day. So he was the one German that's, fellow. Yeah. So yeah. he was the one that suggested, uh, "Why don't you get in touch with Mark and see what he thinks about it?" Yeah. You know? And I did. Was they active at that point? Uh, no, not no. at that point. No. But they got active after two thousand eight, two thousand nine, mm-hmm. something. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that that's how it all came together and uh, you know I've always been a fan huge fan of uh, you know like Chuck obviously mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Becerra's vocals um, Mark Van Drun, you know Martin sorry mm-hmm. Martin Van Drun. Yeah. Uh so you know that type of um, old school uh, no holds barred type of vocals is is my favorite to me, that is the insidious to see sound. So, yeah, I, I think uh, it's very important to have, 
you know, uh, a frontman uh, singer that has, uh, you know, identity. Of because course. At, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, you have the music, but you need to have something that, as I said, the, the cake, you know, cream on top. And, and that's, uh, that's difficult, obviously, in these days because there's so many bands, there's so much music yeah. to stand out. Then again, that being said, it's like we never, with Insidious, we never uh, felt like we, we were supposed to reinvent uh, the death metal wheel. No, uh, that was my question that I had in mind. Uh, what, what kind of, where did you draw inspirations to make riffs for this? Was the, did you feel that you kind of made your own kind of death metal or did you deliberately go into a band and take something out no that, that that's the thing with insidious and i can speak for dim as well it's like that there's not much pre-plan pre-planning nope. you know and I what think comes out comes out exactly and mm. what uh, what works works yep and obviously up to a certain point there's democracy but uh up above democracy there there's decisions that has to be made mm-hmm. and that's not always easy no nope. you know and uh uh, I always do the reference to to Gene and Paul, but you know it's you know decisions have to be made, and uh, you know uh, sometimes you might not uh, do the right decisions, but you have to live with it. You know, of course, for the most part, you do the right decisions because, because otherwise you yeah, wouldn't yeah. do what you do. But when I listen to your, uh, you have two albums, right? Right. And when I listen to those, I and since I'm not. You know, I'm not well known within the death metal thing or genre. I I don't know which bands to compare it to. That's the point. And that's that's the best compliment I could ever get for Insidious's music because it's, you know, if 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 people cannot uh, put it in, well, it, obviously it has death metal, but if you cannot really pinpoint any specific thing, that's to me that's that's the best compliment, you know. Especially when we uh, don't really feel like uh, trying something new. I mean, we yeah, new riffs, but it, yeah. you know, in the ether, I'm sure, I'm sure it's, <laughs> I'm sure it's been made. You know, so it, yeah, sure. But uh, the thing is that uh, you don't have any bands that you can compare to either. No, I, I feel like uh, the good thing about making music is to not. Uh, think about other bands or other type of music. You know, it's like some people are, uh, you know, claiming that uh, myself in Mork is ripping off this and that. You know, and uh, obviously I love Dark Throne, but I'm not ripping off any Dark Throne stuff. You know, no, you. It- but um, <laughs> we just got served one drink. Thank you. One drink. Only one, from drink. one guy. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you have it. You have it. No, I, I don't know go. what it is. You you have it. <laughs> we can share it. Yeah. <laughs> Corona. No people. Some people are you know claiming that I'm ripping off bands, but the truth is I'm doing like you are telling me. You know I'm making stuff <laughs> that it just comes out there and then. I think so. I don't, and, uh, I don't plan to make a dark obviously no, song. no one does. Oh, some people actually plagiarize or whatever you want to call it. Blatantly. They do, but I do steal. not I do not hear that when I listen to Insidious. No. That's the point here. Yeah. All right. And the same with me when I listen to Mork. You, you know how much I love Dark Throne. Yep. And yeah, of course there's similarities, but it's 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 a result of inspiration, not plagiarism. Yeah, the, you, know? you, you can you can say the same about ACDC and Ch- uh, Chuck Berry. Yeah, you know? ACDC has been ripping off themselves for fucking, it's fucking ages. It's rock and roll. <laughs> exactly. You know, this is black metal. <laughs> Fuck. It's, it, music is supposed to be, you know, um, obviously coming from a band like yourself as well. Mm. You, you analyze your own stuff. But yeah. I, I try as best as I can when I listen to other people's music not to analyze because I no. do that with my own stuff anyway. Does so it I wanna, move I you? Just yes wanna... or no? Does it move you? Yeah. yeah? That's simple. It's yeah. that simple. Either either it moves you or it don't. 
I don't care what what thoughts or planning went in behind it. You know, if it moves me, it moves me. Yeah. It's quite simple. Yeah, it is. It is. And, uh, um, yeah. and that doesn't mean that stuff that doesn't move you is bad, because obviously we have all these bands and artists that you you can tell by just analyzing mm. that. Wow, this is great, but it doesn't move me. Nope. So move on nope. to the next or something else. That's how it is. The band can have the most credibility uh, lineup ever, but the music can still be shit, you know? Yeah. To you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, not shit, but. No, no that's well, true. Well, shit moves as well. You know yeah. what? That's another thing when, <laughs> that bothers me. When people say, that is shit or this is shit, that's basically bullshit because you should put it i think this is shit yeah it, it it's not shit you can't decide that it is shit no it, it i because think it's, yeah you know exactly and uh, this is like it's kindergarten stuff it, but it's people... a good reminder that you know it's like uh if something if if you don't like something it just you don't have to speak it you no. know no it, but it's because there's going to be someone else that loves it. Of course. And it, it, you know, not to be a prude or anything, but, you know, it's like if, if I have something good to say about something, I do that. Yeah. But if it's, if something doesn't move me, I don't have to Let express it. Let everyone know. No, I don't have to express it. But so. that, that comes down to personalities. Yeah. The, the comment... The negative comment says more about the guy typing it than what the comment is about. Sure. Yeah. 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 Yep. There you go. <laughs> there what? you go. There you go. I think that, that this tastes... What is it? it Did you find out what it is? I think it's uh, old Danish or something. It's not homemade. I don't know. It okay, could be. <laughs> it could very well be. Taste. Oh. That's old uh, Danish, right? That's Gammel Dansk, yeah. 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 <laughs> Not for you? <laughs> nah. That's for, that more for you. More, yeah, that's a, a bit closer to We, we don't to the, have the fernet here. No, it's the bitter. The closest Today. thing. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> well, did Shane appear from the very beginning, by the way? Um, Not, not in 2004. I think that was like... 2005, 2006, something like that. But, but uh, so... A couple of years went by when yeah. you basically just uh, demoed and yeah okay. Uh, I think we had like probably twenty, twenty or so ideas for songs. Yeah, in in the first two three years. And this was like uh, uh, internet uh, back and forth uh, yeah, yeah. tracks. Yeah, but um, once we got s- stuff together properly. Mm. Uh, my head was on Shane already because I've been friends with him f- for a long time. So, did you play together with Napalm Death? Uh, no, actually. How did uh, you get uh, to know that guy? We probably played a few festivals together, but I don't think we have ever shared the same tour. Bill. Bill. No, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. So, um, how did you get to know him? Oh, that was back in the uh, '90s, sometime, and uh, yeah, you, you just know when you vibe with with certain people you know and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah obviously he's busy with tons of other uh he has stuff. a lot of stuff right yes but he you know he, uh, i hail people that i get to do all their um you know artistic ways you know it's like he has so many projects where some of them might be close to his main band napalm death obviously but you know um like you as well, we have all these different sides to uh, ourselves that needs creatively flow. Flow, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, several uh, bubbles to uh, pop. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I think I recently actually heard a new album that uh, Shane did uh, together with uh, our other friend, Dirk Verburen. Uh, and that that just shows me that uh, Shane probably is that is a kind of guy who loves music. Oh, absolutely! You know what I mean? He doesn't have to be grindcore. And it, no, and he isn't. As you say, he, 
you know, to me, he's he's an open-minded uh, artist. Yeah, and he enjoys a lot of stuff. You should introduce us sometime. Yeah, I should. He seems like a really nice guy. Absolutely, absolutely. Where is he from? Birmingham. Is Birmingham. Bro Brosley. Oh yeah. Yes. Did you see him when you went over there? Uh, last time I was over, yeah. 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 This year. Yeah. 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 Cool. Oh, we did uh, we did the uh, insidious video. Yes. For invisible war in in Germany, we did that in was it that's sept not that September. Yes. So that was um, the last time you saw it. That was good to f actually be able to do that. Uh, obviously, that didn't um, make it easy uh, during these times. Uh, mm -mm. Tony couldn't attend because you know uh, just flying in from from the states was uh, uh, deemed illegal. Um, it's chaos over there. Yeah, and then there was like, um, you know, the budget didn't call for that as well. Uh, and Cyrus, uh, Tadia, mm. uh, the other guitar player, he could not attend that as well. So there was just the four of us, and we had uh, Lucas, our uh, our live drummer, that's mm. been helping out for for quite some time now. He stepped in on a short notice just to. So we could be able to actually do performances video, yeah. stuff in the video. Yeah. And that that's how it is, you know. I, yeah. I, you know, everyone did a, a great job and accommodated themselves as best as possible. And uh, so, um, yeah, I, I wish the wish it was different, you know, mm. or better for everybody. But you know, you got to roll with the punches. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it, it was that or nothing, you know. And yeah. uh, the being, video is cool too. I I really like it. Uh, it but came we are, but we are rushing now. <laughs> are we rushing? Yeah, we need. I need to hold you back a bit. All right, okay. We need uh, to, uh, the new album. Oh, you uh, mean uh, Jacob's Ladder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, let's go back to when you uh, when you um, uh, were the formative years. How did things uh, fall into place with? Uh, recording the album, the record deal. Yeah, so so the thing was that when the first album came out on Centrometer Records, and after uh -huh. that was out, we were we were destined to to tour quite a lot actually. Uh, but for some reason, that didn't uh, accumulate, and uh, uh, because of Dimmu or because yeah, of obligations partly, elsewhere. Partly. I, w I wouldn't mm. say it was just because of Dimmu, because uh, we obviously with Dimmu, uh, with the Abra album, we we toured, we toured quite a bit, but yeah. it, that was never the main reason, you know. So, you know, it's got to be fair. Insidious is it's a small uh, band in the death metal community. I'm not I'm not downplaying myself or or the band, but. Well, that's it, it is what it is. It is, and um, you know. Um, but they have it, sort of an all-star team going on. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of bands have, and when it comes down to uh, um, to sales, that's what the main thing is for uh, for record companies. Obviously, yep. You know, um, the bands or we artists, we will make music regardless. But it's you know. The, the record companies they need a certain amount of of numbers or figures to yeah. to weigh up for the expenses obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. and if it doesn't match then well tough luck you know that's why they that, that's why it's really hard to sign unknown bands yeah yeah you can't guarantee and especially anything. when 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 the band themselves are kind of like uh um yeah the we were not able to to tour the way we had planned, mm. regardless of the label or not or no. You know, it's like, yeah, it, it came out to to a few shows, and some of the shows was really big. You know, big festivals and stuff. Uh, so no tours, no proper tours, no, no. one offs, and that yeah, one offs, and and that for us as a band, that that again is. Uh, it's expensive in the sense that, you know, we live uh, on different continents and we have to um, get together to rehearse, to play one show there and one show there. Mm. Then, 
you know, um, what we get paid to play is uh, maybe cover up the expenses. Yeah. You yes. know, so it's it's kind of like pay to play. Yeah. Although we would do it anyway. But it's a it's kind. I, I suppose you you have Dimmu. You don't need anything else. You know. So this is I suppose a passion project. Well, I guess you can say that. Um, it's it's an outlet. You know. Yeah. Uh, yep. For for stuff that I know that uh, this and this idea. Uh, obviously wouldn't fit into Dimmu. Although we... I need to cut you off, my friend. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, where was the album recorded? Di were you doing this uh, DIY, the first album? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, we, we did um, the drums with uh, Marius in Strand Studios. And uh, pretty much recorded the guitars, bass... And vocals ourselves um, for the in first your respective album. Uh, homes yes, and yes. studios. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, mm -hmm. We did uh, we did that in Cyrus's studios, actually. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, where's that again? Where does he live? Warm Sound. Warm Sound. Yeah, yeah, Ormsund. Ormsund. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and that's um, that worked out really well. Um, and you just you, you 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 what was the first album called? Shadowcast. Shadowcast. Yes. yes. Did you just catch a record deal like like that? Um, not really. We had to. Did you shop it around? Shop around, yeah, mm. yeah. But um, you know, word of mouth. Um, yeah. Got us that, and obviously it wasn't to our advantage, but we don't really. You know, it, it is what it is. You mm -hmm. know, it's like um, so. But I'm really, really proud of the the first album. Uh, it was is it, for me listening back to it now, ten years later. It's it's a typical uh, uh, first type of album. You know, uh, it's kind of fresh, very fresh, and uh, eagerness. Like, Ooh, that was, that was you know listening to back to the songs and and uh, arrangements and stuff. Ooh, ooh. Oh, well, that's ballsy. <laughs> yeah. But was was Century Media as big back then as now? Yeah, I, I probably would say they were bigger. Oh, really? Yeah. Because that's one of the biggest ones, right? Yeah. It's, it's Nuclear Blast and uh, Century Media. They, you know, they, they know the, the extreme metal stuff. Uh, there's a few other uh, record companies, obviously, under that, but those are the two top ones. And, now they're, they're independent, right? Well, depends on how you independent how you look at it. But um, well um, yeah, as long as as the head uh, people in each company uh, are in touch with reality yes. and 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 the extreme metal, and they get to do. What they think is best for the bands, uh, I have no worries. You know, it's like that. I think both companies now are like uh, under a bigger uh, company, a parent company. Yeah. Yep. But um, you know, uh, both companies are like you know uh, up there. Yeah. 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 Well, so obviously, uh, and the good thing too is that to think about that is like. Um, the both guys that started Nuclear Blast and, and Century Media, they started basically from their bedroom. Basically. Is Century Media German as well? Yes. It is? Yeah. I thought it was American. Well, they, they have an American branch just like Nuclear Blast. So, yeah. they, you know, it's always funny to go through the American customs and you're going on tour and they're like, ah. Oh, Who's uh, doing your papers for this story? Like Nuclear Blast USA. It's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> always get a weird. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Always get a weird, uh, <laughs> weird face about that. But <laughs> keep an eye on these fellas. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Now I'm wondering what happened after the album was released. The first one. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it kind of fell into the sand, basically. Yeah, because it didn't make a big smash. Uh, no, I, I mean we got a 
quite a few uh, good reviews, and we played some shows, but yeah, I'm, I suppose you have to tour and you know, yeah, pl- maintain. plus it's, it's it's like you know, uh, being that type of band, and you kind of need money to to fund stuff, yep. obviously. Yes, and uh, uh, but. You know, um, the reason why we're sitting here doing this podcast is because it's not because of anything else, but the music. Yep. And that's that's what it always comes back to. Yes. So. Um, but what happened? You you played a few shows, and when did that end? It didn't really end. We, it just didn't start. <laughs> <laughs> So that's. Uh, but the festival yeah. appearances you talked about that yeah. happened. Uh, that was, I that guess was good the same stuff. year. Yeah. Same year. Yeah, same. We had we had a few in 2011, 12, 14, 15. Now you've been spreading out yeah, like that. Yeah, so it's not that many shows. But Even we have played together. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and we will in the future as well, I'm sure. Of course. Um, but yeah. Um, that. The idea now, obviously, when we get uh, rid of this bullshit, yeah. uh, we can get back to business uh, for everybody. Yeah. And, and so we're not going to uh, miss out on an opportunity the second time. You know. So, yeah, we're just going to roll with it and um, we're ready. We're just sitting on the fence, just ready to fucking as, slaughter. Uh, as everyone, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But have you been walking around all these years then, uh, kind of a little bit pregnant with riffs and ideas? Yes, very pregnant for many years. Yeah. And, uh, you know... Um, As we talked about at the beginning, uh, you have been demoing and recording yeah, and many uh, years before this release. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, Let's talk about the time up to this point. Well, we, we started uh, working on songs in 2011, 2012, obviously. Um and it's it's like an on and off type of thing um and just yeah like with any other uh, musical ideas for me it's about finding uh, a feel a yep. atmosphere and and a groove and uh, and uh, yeah it's it's you just reached the point i suppose when you had you know, 16 songs or whatever. And yeah. Then you that's, that's when you have to go into the producing mode and just shave off what's not, I mean, there's a cool riff here and there, but as a song, nah. Yep. And then just chop, chop, chop. Yes. You know, and, uh, and that's looking back at, at stuff even now when I re- uh, record new ideas for Demo and Insidious, it's like, nah still got to think like a producer and chop off stuff that just because you have a moment, uh, you go into it and like, I record this uh, theme or this riff or this idea, uh, leave it. And then, um, you know, in, in one or two weeks or one month or whatever, Mm -hmm. you listen back and then it's like, do you have the same feeling for this? Yeah. If not, let it then, rest for a while. Then either let it rest or just skip it altogether. Because yeah. it's if you don't have the same feeling after after initial feeling, yes. then you know we we all get caught up in in our moments, don't we? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Of um, course, it's very important to be producing yourself before you even put it towards your uh, your colleagues in the band. Yeah, you know. Yes. Absolutely. But this new album, was this recorded uh, the same way? Home studios? Pretty much, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did uh, the drums in the in the warehouse where we re- rehearse, And I, uh, I did the guitars with Cyrus in my uh, house. Yeah. Shane came over and did his bass in my house. Uh, Mark did uh, some vocals there. He kept actually some of the vocals that he did for the demos. Yeah. Because he felt uh, the feel was... Right. Right. Mm. So why why push it, you know? Yeah. Although course. he did most of the vocals in the warehouse as well and um 
Is that the same place where you share with uh, Susperia? Yes, Susperia. In the, and, uh, in the basement up there? Yes, yes. I think. Have it, you played there? I have actually rehearsed there with uh, Shodolv. Oh, okay, okay. When he was uh, supposed to step in. Ah, and look. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So yeah. we went up there. Yeah. At least one time. Yeah. Where is that at? Where is that? It's, it's, it's close to where here. I live. It's, yeah, it's close to here. Okay. So it's... Um, is that in the basement of a biker club? Yeah, another biker club, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Cool, a cool place as well. Absolutely. And Great it sound, room. sounds good. I need to hear the popping of the sound. Really? Yep. <sighs> like we told you in the very beginning, this will be a bit of a party episode. And we are enjoying ourselves. And when we are uh, done with this, we will probably enjoy ourselves even more. Don't Most likely. Don't you think? Most likely. Like the, That's what we do. The lampshade That's what on we the heads and stuff? Yeah, some, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, this brings me to... Uh, you obviously have changed labels this time around. How did that happen? Well, that... Well, after a few years with Century Media, that... Uh, yeah, that didn't work out obviously because we we didn't really keep our part of the deal. So yeah, fair enough, you know. Um, Do you own the rights for that, that album, by the way? No, no. They, they own the rights. Full ownership. It. Yes. Yep. But they so, still produce it, right? Well, it's it's still there for people who want who wants it. Yeah, good, <laughs> good. So, it's available. Yeah, it's available. Yes. Yeah. Good. Um, but yeah, so. We we obviously looking for uh, a new partnership, and uh, we were shopping it around the demos that you heard some of it. Mm -hmm. Thing, yeah. Um, but uh, we ended up with obviously Nuclear Blast, which uh, we are with Dimu as well, and I'm really really relieved and happy that that worked out. You know, yeah, because. Um, I'm too old. The other guys are too old to do publicity stunts ourselves. Apart from this, <laughs> but uh, you don't want to you run. Know, it, it, <laughs> you don't you want know. to run naked and it, it, through the, exactly. the main street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's part of history. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, so we we just felt that it was uh, yeah, it yeah. worked out really well and. Um, the package is great. You know, I think so too. I've been following. Uh, you know, I, you showed me the artwork a long time ago, and I, I saw the artwork before all the logos and titles and stuff came on there, and I was uh, a bit curious how we, how it would yeah, turn Dan out. Yeah, Dan Seagrave, he's he's uh, he's a huge favorite of mine when it comes to the cover artwork yeah. or artwork in general. He's uh, he just have that really. Uh, otherworldly touch to yeah. it and I, I really like the way he go about his art you know he, he starts with sketch is continue with like you know painting it and mm. then do it digital and, and go back and changing things and is it a mix of digital and yes, actual yes, physical course, yeah. stuff yeah okay. but um, but from the ground up it's it's by his hand and his pencil. Yes. You know, and his sick mind. The new art is <laughs> awesome. I think so. I am I'm, I mean, to this day, I, I can't really uh, think about a, uh, an album cover or artwork that he has done that doesn't really appeal to me. Yeah. They do in all, in all their own ways. Yeah, and, and the thing is, when I finally saw the finished product, the color scheme and everything just... Fit the, it fit, yeah. You know, with yeah. the color of the logo, is the greenish shade. I, yes, and then it's earthy colors, and I think that really goes hand in hand with with the production as well, because it's for me being biased and all. Uh, by us, by us, I think it's the production is earthy. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I can see that, and and death metal by definition should be. Earthy. Uh, yes. It shouldn't be metal. <laughs> well, album is called After Death, right? Yeah. Yeah. What happens after death? Uh, A new uh, album. It, no, uh. no, 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 no. Uh, by the cover, I think 
that hints, you know, you can see that little portal in there and uh, all the grimness. I think Dan uh, did very well when he he got the lyrics and and the music and and you know, I think he nailed it pretty fucking awesome. Well, awesome. You know, it's like we none of us knows what happens after. Oh, yeah. After we go, but personally, I I have a feeling it's a transit, you know, and. Well, what happens after uh, after death metal? Dance well, band? <laughs> <laughs> Country? Uh, so, yeah, well, uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Even more death metal? Yeah. Even more death. <laughs> Permanent uh, death metal. Permanent death metal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Post-death metal. Post-death <laughs> metal. metal. <laughs> Holy shit. We'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about uh, the reception of the album and everything been that's great. been going on. It's been uh, surprisingly uh, well. Mm. Um, I personally, I, 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 you know, it's like if people like it, that's thumbs up. If people don't like it, I hope they, uh, you know, stick to that, not yeah. liking it. Sure. <laughs> Why should we care? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, it's it's been really well uh, received. And um, when was it released? Uh, 30th of October 2020. Yeah, that's uh, pretty recent. Yep, it's one month, one month old, but the songs are like almost 10 years old. Yeah, so that that's that has been quite a challenge to you know, it, it's been in it's been ready for so long, you know, and to wait for it to actually come out with all the delays because of what what the situation is and whatnot yeah uh, you know so i think we we decided to just once we knew that we had done the deal and blah blah we, we didn't really listen to the songs and album we just put it on the shelf because if, you know that's again that's where the producing part comes in yep. you, you never stop being a producer no nope. but you can stop yourself from from getting or going down the rabbit hole of your own songs, you know, it's like, oh, maybe I should change that, or maybe we should do this and this and this. Yeah, and yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yep. you know, so we just left it, and uh, and for us it's old, but for everybody else it's new and fresh. And of we, course. you know, we we tried even a couple of the songs live when we played shows, and it worked out, you know. And that's why it's like, oh, that's another way of producing yourself because if it works works out live. In that tempo or yep. whatever, mm. then you put it on an album and you see, you see the reception from the people. Yep. And it's like, oh, you know, maybe we're wrong about this. Maybe we should put it on the album. It's like, it's a constant <laughs> battle. <laughs> battle. Yeah. For of, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. We have come to the end, I think. Oh, the, the new album is out. But what's after death? Uh, dance band or country oh, act? Okay. okay. I know you are a closet country guy. Oh, I'm not a closet country guy. I'm no, you're full not. on country. You are. <laughs> What's the favorite again? Uh, Valen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more of the Johnny Cash fellow. Oh, he, he is up there. He's a bit sure. darker, he, you know? No. Valen is way darker. Yeah. <laughs> He's way darker. <laughs> Maybe we should play some. Uh... I think you should. Yeah. Oh, I don't well. know, man. You want to, want to talk about something? No, I, you know, it's, it's just good to have you here. And, uh, I will remain, uh, and so you shall. I have uh, uh, the car <laughs> is parked, and I have popped a few beers. I can't yeah. drive legally. Exactly. I will stay here, and uh, you know what? I would like to hear your new demos if you would allow. Do you have like a headset or something? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Because you stupid ass, you hinted that you were making your demo demos. Uh, yes, uh-huh. we are. Um, I don't know if I can play you that, but I'm really. Um, we'll see. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Okay. The last few words is yours. Uh, this is your time to be Gene Simmons from Kiss and it? promote whatever you want. Well, I'll promote Gene Simmons from Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he needs promoting. Well, maybe on your podcast. Gene, would you like to come on here? I think he would. Wait, it's calling now. What's this? See? It's vibrating on the phone. See what here. happened? Ah, oh, it's not Gene. 
Oh, it, well. it was uh, it was uh, Vinnie Vincent. Ah, uh, okay. Well, you know, why don't have them both at the same time? <laughs> that would be a picture. <laughs> Promote something. Come on, push your stuff, man. Uh, I'm pushing. Yep. <clears throat> don't push. <clears throat> don't push drugs. No. Only farts. Uh, only farts. Um, no. Well, if if people want to listen to some. Uh, honest, straight up music. I wouldn't even classify it as death metal, although it is probably. Um, just give it a shot, and um, I'm thankful for all the support that people gives Insidious Disease and Demon Burger. So, uh, anything, hope- anything seen in planning? Mm, well, touring and touring. Anything? Anything coming up? Yeah, we got new songs for both bands yeah but so, any, uh, do you have any shows planned for next year if it yeah works? It, it, it's just basically sitting on the fence yeah with insidious yeah insidious as well yes yeah. we are we actually um, we are recording we this are kind of having a show on the fence with, yeah up here yeah at the fun house yeah. yes at fun house yeah we should do that yeah and uh, this is recorded uh, Saturday uh, 5th of December and tomorrow, Sunday, Vakun will actually announce Mork coming there. All right. For cool. the second time. Well, you've been there before. With you. Yes. Ah, oh, man, we can't scroll past that. No. That was a big one for me. I remember. <clears throat> and a big one for Insidious as well, because it was the second time Insidious Disease played Vakun unsigned. We oh. did it in 2009 as an yeah. unsigned band, and we did it again in, what was it, 2016, 17? Six, 16. 16. Let's yeah. say unsigned. that. Unsigned. Because yeah. at that time, we were, we were still dealing with the uh, contract yeah. show stuff. So, technically, twice as an unsigned band playing Wacken. I remember I was at my previous uh, apartment out on the veranda, I think. Yeah, uh, when I received a text from you, when you basically asked, uh, "Hey, you wanna come along to Vakken with us?" and I was like, uh, "Yeah." Short yeah. notice. Was <laughs> yes, but it was uh, very okay. Yeah, because I never been there, you know. So you kindly, you guys, Insidious, you brought me along, and uh, I, I actually gave myself the title of Bear Tech. Yeah, I, you, you're the original. Beer tech. I am? Yeah. I love that. Let's maintain that. You need a patch. I re- <laughs> yeah, I do. I remember uh, the backstages down there were excellent. You have the, your own tent with, uh, you know, like a, a beer tap inside. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Wacken, why is Wacken the best festival, metal festival on earth? Well, you just have to experience it. That's yes. a, as simple as that, you know. And we were, as Dimu, we were fortunate to play it in the first time in 97. Yeah. We played in the afternoon uh, with a section. Yeah. And Udo, Overkill, and, uh, and a few others. And it was, you know, for a festival that starts in, in the field with, in 91 or 92, I think it was, with 400, 500 people. Mm. And by 97, there was like probably eight or 9,000 people. Yeah. Uh, which uh, for a European festival is maybe not that much, but, you know, it just grew from there because it's... How many today? Today with, uh, with people working there, it's probably 90, 95,000 people. I mean, the, the whole village of Wacken is in on, in on it. Yeah. You know, and that and that's and that fuels the infrastructure for the rest of the year. I bet you know. So it, it's just uh, yeah, it's just amazing. I'm so appreciative because they booked Vakken for this year, and Mork was on the bill. But I, as I understand it, they just when COVID hit, they mm. just annulled everything and started rebooking. Right. So I'm really happy to be back. Yeah. On yeah. the bill. Yeah. You know. And uh, I really hope this will go through, you know? Yeah, me too. Because this has always been... From the first time I placed my feet on the stage with Mork as an outfit, Vakken was the goal. Yeah. 
you know yeah so uh, and what a goal i mean that's that's a mecca of, yep. of well met, put metal uh, concerts you know it's uh if you play whack and then you know then it's okay yeah then it's very okay <laughs> you don't stop but it's very okay <laughs> uh, yes we just return <laughs> yeah <laughs> so thank you walking thank you very much yes thank you walking so uh all right man should we uh, drink some more well we might have a few drinks yeah yeah i uh, in honor of your new ep thank you where you did uh, an amazing cover mm-hmm. have you listened I'll, to this shit? yes uh, i liked the uh, uh, your own song as well mm-hmm. um but i really really like your take on the cover yeah we are bleeping out the name because uh yeah of course because I we're can't. we're in the age of uh, censorship. Uh, that is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. But uh, that's a whole different podcast, though. Yeah, we should do that too. Oh, I, I don't know if we should. In uh, three hours <laughs> in three from hours. now, we'll do a new one. <laughs> 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 we just censor ourselves. Yes, <laughs> beep we, all we, the way. We'll pr- we produce ourselves. That's. Uh, it's only way in to go. beer number fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did but did you listen through the entire Pesta song? By the way. Yeah. The, fr- yeah. the, the, the new one. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, to be honest, it hasn't caught me yet. It's one of those you have to. Give I think so. Yeah, ones. I think so. And that that's a good thing because uh, normally when I listen to music, if if it's an instant hit, mm. it's either like oh, it stays forever. Yeah. Or gets or, forgotten. Or, it, or gets forgotten. Yeah, true. So, but yeah, uh, looking forward to listening to the vinyl. I no, for- no hint there. Yeah, you just <laughs> you, you just made an excuse for yourself to come to Holden. You know that? Yeah, of course. Because I forgot it. I uh, I didn't bring one. I make up stuff to have <sighs> excuses. Roll with the punches. <laughs> Problem, reaction, solution. <laughs> <laughs> my good friend. Cheers, my, my friend. friend. Thank you very much. Let's do this again, okay? Yes. Thank you, man. See ya!